Hello everybody and welcome back to the Galactic Armory. My name is Aaron and today I'm going to be showing you how I made this Republic Commando Scorch Helmet. This is the culmination of a lot of different efforts and a lot of trial and error went into this helmet. So hopefully I'll be able to save you guys some time if you want to make your own. Now this helmet is a cast rather than a 3D print. So that means we're pretty much going to be able to jump right into painting. And you can find a link to the casted helmet in the description if you want to make one yourself. Now some of you might already be familiar with painting techniques and are just here for the visor. If so, be sure and check the description for timestamps to skip ahead. With all that said, let's get started on making this Republic Commando Scorch Helmet. So the first step of finishing a casted helmet is actually going to be trimming out the T-visor and opening up the neck hole a little bit. It's just kind of the nature of casted helmets. You can kind of only put one hole in it, and we want that to be the neck hole or the head hole. So we're going to have to trim out the visor using a variety of Dremel bits and then open up the head hole a little bit using a sanding bit. Now before we actually get started cutting, you're going to want to wear the proper PPE. First, you're going to want to wear a respirator because this is going to kick up a lot of plastic shavings. You obviously don't want to be breathing it. And you're also going to need some kind of eye protection. Now, my respirator here has a full face protection. If you can get something like that, that would be ideal. To get started, I'm actually going to be using a drilling bit on my Dremel to just poke a bunch of holes in the visor. That's going to make cutting it a lot easier since we're going to be just cutting the seams between those pieces and then we can rip it out. You can see I've also got a shop vac running, sucking up all that excess plastic that's getting cut out. This is gonna help keep your workspace really clean. And I would highly recommend you do something like this. Otherwise, you and your entire workspace will be coated with these plastic shavings. You're gonna wanna take it really slow because if you cut too much away or accidentally cut where you shouldn't, it's gonna be a bit of a pain to fix it. So the slower and more methodical we are now will save us time down the road. Once I have the main shape of the T-visor cut out, it's still very rough. I'm gonna be switching over to a sanding bit to actually smooth it all out and give us the iconic T-visor that we all know and love. I'm also gonna shave some of the thickness of the walls of the helmet in that area so that we'll be able to fit our visor closer to the exterior. Now with a casted helmet, unless the mold is built in one piece, which I mean only a few really can, you're gonna have a little bit of flashing between the parts of the mold. You can kind of see me tracing my finger here where that flashing is on this helmet. And luckily, most of it is already very well hidden in existing edges of the helmet. If the mold is designed well, you can hide those very well, but unfortunately that just the design of the Republic Commando doesn't have edges all the way around. So we're gonna have to sand down some of that flashing behind the vent area. To do that, we're gonna grab a 120 grit pad of sandpaper and very gently smooth down that flashing so that we have a nice and smooth helmet for painting. I say very gentle because the rest of the helmet is incredibly smoothed already. If we were to sand too hard or too roughly, we'd probably leave a lot of deep scratch marks in the helmet and that's not what we wanna do, which is why we're gonna follow up with some higher grit like 220 and then 300 and then we're going to wet sand this helmet so that the areas we sanded are completely camouflaged with the rest of the helmet. We're gonna let the helmet dry after our wet sanding, but then we'll be ready to start painting. Now for the first layer of paint on Scorch, we're gonna be using a Rust-Oleum Flat Black Primer. And this is actually the color I'm gonna be using for most of the helmet. Luckily, Scorch has a pretty black helmet, so this makes our life pretty easy right now. Just make sure you coat the entire helmet, leaving none of the white spots underneath. Now I've jumped ahead in time a little bit, but I've got the helmet taped off for the area we're gonna be painting white. Before we add the white, we're actually gonna be applying some liquid latex for the weathering effect that Scorch has on his helmet. He has got a lot going on on his helmet, but I can identify the three main scratches on the forehead and a lot of other miscellaneous damage and scratches all over. So I'm gonna be applying this liquid latex on with a toothpick so that I can have pretty good control of where I put it. I just brought up a reference image and tried to hit most of the major pieces that were pretty identifiable for his helmet and then just kind of went my own way for everything else. We're gonna let this latex cure for about 20 minutes and then we'll be able to paint on the white. Painting on the white is pretty simple. We're using a Rust-Oleum Ultra Matte White. For this, just do it in a very light coat. You don't even have to cover all of the spots. It's okay if there's a little bit of black showing through because really it just kind of enhances the weathering effect. And Scorch has a very, very dirty helmet. So it even kind of adds to it a little bit in my opinion. Okay, now it's time for one of my favorite parts of the whole build. We're gonna be peeling off the painter's tape and then rubbing off the liquid latex from earlier. Now, since we put the liquid latex on before we painted the white, when we peel off that latex with our finger, it actually reveals the black paint underneath that we started with. This will give you the effect that paint is chipped off to reveal different colored paints underneath. I always love this part of the build process because it really just, it's a, there's a huge difference from 
pre-pulling off the tape to after and rubbing off all that latex is actually kind of fun and methodic. And now we can start weathering the helmet, which is always a lot of fun. Now the first step of the weathering process is gonna be doing a black wash. Very simple process, but it's gonna give you some great results. You just mix some black acrylic paint with a little bit of water, brush it on with a sponge brush, and then dab it off with a paper towel. There's gonna to be some paint that's left behind, and it's just gonna make the helmet look dirtier, more worn in, and more realistic. Now I'm only really gonna be doing this to the white, the front white part of the helmet, because black washing black paint doesn't really do anything. We're gonna be weathering that with some different colored paints later on. The nice thing about this technique is that it's very dynamic. You can add more paint to make it darker or add more water to make it lighter. You can do it in multiple coats, kind of just layering it on. But we definitely want this white paint to be darker so that it more accurately matches Scorch's helmet. Now the final weathering step is gonna be using some oil paints to touch up the remaining areas. We're also gonna use them to enhance the front area. Now Scorch's helmet isn't just black and white, there's some light browns, different shades of brown in there, and it really adds a lot of depth and complexity to the helmet when you add those other colors in. The nice thing about oil paints is that you can fade them in very lightly. It's not very overpowering, but it does add a level of grime and dirtiness to the helmet. Instead, we're gonna be applying some brown to the front area, using it to kind of enhance those marks that we took off with the liquid latex, giving them some depth as well as just kind of adding some brown spots around the helmet. We can use black oil paints to fill in some of the crevices that the black wash didn't really fill in that well. And we can use white oil paints to add the scratches around the remaining helmet. You can see on the reference image that Scorch has a lot of white kind of weathered details that are kind of rubbed off on the helmet. And that's going to help enhance the rest of the helmet so that's not just totally black. There's a lot you can do with oil paints, but just make sure not to go overboard. I kind of had to stop myself just from adding too many dirt and grime layers. It was starting to take away from everything else. But that is the paint job of the helmet finish. Now we're going to work on the visor assembly and give it that Republic Commando visor glow. So for the Republic Commando visor, first I'm going to show you how everything looks put together and then I'm gonna start working on and sourcing the individual pieces. So the entire visor system is going to be two clear plastic visors with window tint backing, an LED strip, and some foam. Now this particular LED strip already has the lights pretty well diffused. That's gonna be one of your big hurdles early on is making it so people can't see individual LED lights shining through your visor. Now the foam is actually going to sit on top of that LED strip and this is special foam, this is plastizote foam, and I use the six millimeter thickness. That foam is going to help diffuse the light even further and kind of give it another depth of lighting so that you don't just have a solid LED bar across the top of the visor. So let's go back a little bit now and start sourcing some of those individual pieces. Now I'm gonna be starting with two clear plastic visors. So I start with a 12 by 12 by 0.06 inches thick sheet of PETG plastic. And on there I have traced out the visor shape that I need to cut. I'm gonna cut those out with some tin snips, but then I'm going to want to form them in an arc that mimics the arc of the helmet. Now I want these visors curved so that they are easier to apply the window tint to, and so that our window tint doesn't flex and move and bubble when we're trying to work with everything. Now you can do this several different ways. You might dip the visors in boiling water to kind of heat them up. Here I just use a heat gun and kind of form them onto this paper roll. It's not ideal, I know, but it does work. Kind of start just evenly heating the visor until it starts to warp and droop. It eventually takes the form of that cylinder. Once it's formed pretty well, I'll take my air gun to actually cool it off pretty rapidly. And once it's cooled off, it will hold that curved shape very well. We're gonna do that twice, so we have two visors that way, and then we can apply the window tint. Okay, applying the window tint is pretty straightforward. I'm just gonna use a piece of tape to help peel off the protective layer on the window tint, and now that blue side is sticky. Before I stick it onto the visor, I'm gonna spray some water on the visor. This will actually help us smooth it out, get rid of all those air bubbles, so that we have a nice, uniform, and clean tint. I'm using my vinyl scraper from earlier from the Master Chief visor, but you could use like something like a credit card, so long as we work out those air bubbles and you just kind of squeegee that water out. Finally, you trim away the excess window tint, and there you go, you've got the one visor. Time to do the same thing on the other visor. Okay, now we're back to putting everything together. And there's a few things I wanna say about the LED strip. The strip that I got has the light very well diffused and it's a very light blue color, just about perfect. The downside is that it only came with a wall outlet. So I had to get a battery that could adequately power the LED strip instead. 
so that I wasn't, you know, tied to an extension cord all the time. The important thing to know is that you need to match the voltage, but I will link both of these products in the description as well. The LED strip came as like a six foot strip, but all I needed was around a foot, so I just cut off the excess. That's the nice thing about these LED strips is that you can cut them shorter if you need to. Now just cutting out the plastizote foam that actually kind of diffuses the light even further will just leave you with a straight edge. Now the Republic Commandos have got a lot going on in their visor. It's not a straight edge, so I'm just going to kind of pinch off the edge, leaving it kind of random, jagged, and kind of longer in the middle. I'm then going to be using some double-sided tape to attach the foam to the top of the LED strip, and then some more double-sided tape to attach the second visor on top of it all. Once you have that assembly completed, we are ready to affix it to the inside of the helmet. Now, once I had the visor held in place on the inside with some tape, I'm going to be using some steel stick epoxy putty to hold the visor in place. First, I used some 60 grit sandpaper to kind of rough up the edge around the visor. This is just to help ensure that the putty will actually stick and stay attached to the helmet. When you're ready, start cutting off small chunks of the putty, mix it together until it's a solid uniform color, and then quickly kind of push it down in some corners of the visor. It's a little bit tricky because you're working with two layers of visor. You wanna try and hold them both in place, but if you can't do that, holding the exterior one, the one that actually faces outward from the helmet, is good too. Once I had that in place, I'm attaching a little bit of Velcro to the back side of the battery and the opposite side Velcro just inside the helmet, kind of on the dome. I might look for a smaller battery pack since my head is kind of a tight fit in this helmet, but for now it'll work on the inside on the top of the dome. Once you have your visor in place, that's about it for this helmet, guys. Let's take a look at the finished helmet. Now this helmet looks amazing in my opinion. I'm very happy with how it came out. It's not perfect to a Republic Commando, but it is accessible. And if you can avoid buying a lot of LED strips like I did, it can be pretty affordable too. It's a little bit tricky to film though, so that's why I'm doing most of the reveal in the dark. That's where I just think it looks the best with the visor glowing with no light glares or anything like that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, it took a lot of trial and error to try and find what worked best, what didn't work, and eventually this is what I settled on. Remember, you can find these casts and others on my site, galacticarmory.net, if you want to complete a project like this yourself. Thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you again in the next one.